Hello, so I'm back with another tutorial and I thought I could make another tutorial on MoviePie but this time how to make dynamic thumbnails. So you see these sort of concepts on YouTube so where you have one image thumbnail that's made of parts so you can see you have one person's face on the left another person's face on the right and these are snippets actually taken from the video itself and put into the thumbnail to show you what the the video is going to be about. So this thing's fairly simple and you could build a program to do it and so that's what I want to do here. I'm going to build a program that does the exact same thing as I showed you before. So what we've got is a video that looks like this. It's fairly simple. You've got a mountain terrain here and then you've got mountain terrain here as well but obviously two different types. And what I want to make is something like this. So like I showed you before one part of the video on the left, one part of the video on the right. And yeah, once we have a piece of code that can do that, we can pretty much automate any video you want to do that same sort of thing. Okay, cool. So let's just jump into the code and what we need to do. So we need to install some dependencies. And remember, I'm doing everything in Python. So you need to install, um, you need to do a pip install of MoviePy. You need to do a pip install of Pillow. So Pillow is, uh, image manipulation and MoviePie is just kind of MoviePie. So let's bring in the imports. Okay, so those are our imports. Pillow is actually called in this. I don't know why it's called PIL, but the package you have to install is called Pillow. I find that really annoying, but that's the way things are. Okay, so we need to specify the path for the thumbnail directory, which will be this. Uh, copy the whole thing. Cool, oh, got that. And then we want to have a video equals video file clip uh, file is what before so yeah we're getting the the path to this thumbnail and then we're getting the video and bringing it into our memory so this there now one thing I find annoying about kind of looking at these programming let's say lectures or tutorials is that it's sometimes difficult to understand what's going on I mean, even if someone tries to explain the concept to me and it's done while someone's typing out a piece of code, it can be really frustrating when you can't get your head wrapped around certain things. So I'll try to break it down what I'm doing part by part, um, but I'll try not to make it too, um, let's face it, boring. So I'll do my best as much as I can about that. Because you are writing equations on the fly, and if you don't have your head completely wrapped over it, it can be a bit annoying trying to work out what's going on. Okay. Now I'll explain this equation and what it does in just a second. Alright. One more line. Um, okay, first for loop done. So basically we're specifying a path of where we want to save the image to. We're then specifying an interval here of what part of the video we want to take a frame from. So let's make this into plain English. So let's say we have a video that is exactly 12 seconds long and we want to get underscores, so underscore is the variable here, that underscore will be zero at first because of all four loops, they have that sort of range, it'll be zero, one, and then on two it will end. So we're gonna have one, or zero, plus one, which equals one, and then we're gonna be dividing that over three. So you can basically say 12 divided by three times by one, which is four, right? There, so, Let's assume that the video is 12 seconds, we're timesing it by that uh, fraction. It then means that at the 4 second interval, I want you to save a frame to that path. 
and then we'll do that again and then instead of being one here it will be two and then you'll have something like uh, three over two is four four times two eight yeah so you get the idea of what that that's doing there okay video close Okay, so what's going on here? So we're closing the video that we had open previously because it saves memory doing that that way. And then we're listing the content to this path, so it should be here. We're going to list the content and put it into a list variable. We're then going through every path or the full path to that image and we're opening it up and creating a PIL object and putting it into that list. So basically this, this section here is just opening up images. And we're putting it into memory. Now then, the actual uh, core part of the code is where we specify our variables and parameters and that sort of thing. RGB. Okay, so I've done quite a bit here. So we're specifying the actual width and height, and we're then creating a new PIL image object, which is completely empty. We're then specifying the the boundings of one image. So the sub x and sub y here is the the dimensions of a of the the the, the cut image. So the image that we're going to take out from one of the video, we're then going to resize that, and this is the kind of first part of the resizing phase. Yeah. Anyway, so we have that done. We're then going to specify our left.
Oops, that's wrong. X, Y. Okay, so this bit here is a bit finicky. And I think it's best shown with a diagram. <coughs> so, <clears throat> let's say we have this. Let's say this is our y, and that's our x. Yeah. So let's say this this part here, right at the top, is zero, um, is zero zero. So top left is zero zero. Now bottom right or the far right is called n n. So our center here would be called c c, and as you add values to c c, it becomes closer to n. So it goes this way. When you minus stuff from CC, you go closer to the zero, 0 coordinate. So what we're doing here is we're getting the center, which is specified in the middle of the object, so the middle of the image. When we minus sub X, which is the subsection that we uh, want for each image, we're working out what the boundary would be for this image to, that's going to be cut. So as we minus sub X, we go closer to the left-hand side, so going left, and then top from the Y, we, we minus that section. So we're we're specifying sub here would be um, it would be somewhere here, so like sub would be there, and sub would be somewhere here as well. So remember, we're minusing sub from this side, we're minusing sub from this side, so it gives us a buffer room, so we only have at least this subsection here of image left. Okay, so it's a bit of a tricky topic. Um, you kind of have to visualize it or draw it out to understand it. But yeah, once you have that, that, once you have that done, you have your your edges and your coordinates. Right then, we need to say an image equals image dot crop, and then we that takes a tuple which we need to specify left, uh, top, right, bottom in that particular order. So bear that in mind. It takes the 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 left first, so that will be the the x-axis and the y-axis, then the x-axis and the y-axis. So x1, y1, x2, y2. Yeah, just remember it that way. Yeah, okay. Cool, too cool, cool. All right. So that's that specified. We then need to specify a new size. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're creating a crop because let's say you run the program and you've got an image like this, right? If you have a, a certain defined width and length, width and height for your image, you're going to have to crop it a little bit so it fits together nicely to make something like this. You're going to have to crop it in a bit so it kind of fits that sort of ratio aspect without having any stretching or distorting in your image. And when you shrink it down, it looks clearer. So we're going to crop the image a little bit first, we're then going to resize it so it fits that dimensions of sub x, sub y nicely, and then we're going to paste that in to our image that was created as a blank earlier, and we're going to offset the image as we move along. So let's say I wanted to add five images, and you can, you just mess around with the variables here and you can get five images you would have a certain offset from each image. Otherwise, if you had no offset, they would just kind of pile up on the top left-hand side. So, yeah, just worth bearing that in mind. And then we're adding the sub X, which is one section of the image, to our offset. So the next time we come around, that offset is 
is understood and we can move the images so that it's it's just nested right next to the image previously so it's just specifying a buffer okay so the final step is to then uh, say new underscore image dot save and then we'll save this as final underscore image dot png um, and let's save that let's delete this so you can actually see it work and let's run anyway the image is done and now here you can see it's been split screened so you got it there got it there cool stuff so yeah that's pretty much how you do it you can you can really just mess around with the variables um, if you want two images anyway that covers this topic I hope you like subscribe and um, stick around for the channel I've got more videos planned and I'll see you next time bye bye